the highway from Houston to Austin with a soundtrack of soul. Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. I stomped on the gas to keep myself awake with no fear. Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. I assured the rest of the wild ass crew that no one else was on the road. Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. We set out on our fantastic voyage towards the tiny house jamboree. Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. This is one of the last positive memories I have of the world before it ended. It had ended many times over before it ended in the most cinematic way possible. The president died in the act of adultery by falling over a chair. New York never built any new prisons and everyone escaped from Rikers. Elon Musk never succeeded in colonizing outer space. Amazon never expanded to Queens and went back to selling books. Everyone came to party in the wild ass beyond December 14, 2018. I invited some guests to come down to the house before the internet had ended. But it's been months since then, so I hope they've all found their way tonight. I've invited the abolitionist author Jackie Wang. The incredible performance artist Nick K. The radically imaginary Raul De Nieves. Post reparations duo do not stand to new taxi pop. Right on a fantastic voyage. Welcome to the wild ass beyond. Oh. 
off and bury in the ground. God will harvest me, crush me dead. I don't care because I was born dead, but just silver alive enough to have a mouth for God's room. The girl has her own alphabet made of funeral flowers. The way she wears her red, red crown, her rose crown, with shame. body, there's the birth of your shadow in a petal as large and potent as earth itself. The insane girls will miss the way you waltz towards death. Bodies from the ground. There are so many bodies coming up from the ground. It's your secret. Being alive is your secret. And secrets always ruin the ones who keep them. We sleep on the shore like ruined people, braiding our dream into a single knot. Bound. When you are bound to me, I can no longer be afraid of myself, but afraid of you. Suffer your shadow. You kept living, but where is mommy? Mommy, where are you? I'm going back to water. They've come for me, but where are you? Waltzing around the rose crown. There is no world. And they say the world happens, but there is no world. I say it makes if to die is to die is to have died, but how did you suffer your shadow? You kept living, but mommy, where are you? I'm going back to water. The earth is itself. The earth is the secret to being alive. And all the insane girls in it who lived Thank you. 
relentless and impersonal flows. It's nothing new. What is born whole fractures, the you of I, the distance between the you of I, identification with an image of self that circulates as I am that. What was it, the disquieting feeling that we don't quite own ourselves, turned inside out and called into presence by the Pavlovian of the push notification. Life becomes the work of feeding the avatar. When the avatar takes over your life, when you become what the public makes you, when the sound makes fractals of your blood, to have been reduced to what number? Being will have been molecularized and scattered. There was nothing left when being was mine for its data. Now is the triadic fracture. The shadow shadow as the avatar of the avatar eating the girl alive. Exhaustion gives way to the mirror. Exhaustion gives way to the mirror. Exhaustion gives way to the mirror. Exhaustion gives way. There's a mirror. A you in the mirror that wants to be fed. Because mommy won't say I for me. She feeds the avatar in proportion to the eye's malnutrition. Being towards absence was the freedom of non-reciprocity. What is left of being when being becomes metadata? Deposed of by the velocity of value production, the annexation of being in the theater where prostrations to identity are performed, faithful to the mirror, held captive by the mirror, Opposed of by the mirror, faithful to the mirror, held captive by the mirror, deposed of by the mirror. Attempted aberrations in the domain of emergence. Attempted aberrations in the domain of emergence. Attempted aberrations in the domain of emergence. Attempted, attempted, attempted aberrations in the domain of emergence. Attempted, deposed of by the velocity, the annexation, the theater. Semiotic mutations, bird women. 
own water. You thirsty, ain't you? You thirsty. Bitches is thirsty. Thirsty? Who's thirsty? Bitches is thirsty.
everything you think about is going to come. You do it in this scene. Trade places. We will get out of here.
Come along and ride on a fantastic voyage. Also, this will double as an intermission, so if you want to go have a drink, you can still hear me in the lobby, but if you'd like, you can come sit with me inside the house.
On the 64th day before the apocalypse, I got to Nora's in the late afternoon. She was staying in an old house. The owner is deceased. He was a sculptor with a kiln in the backyard and a large ceramic deity in the basement. Nora and her partner Joel were doing groundwork to begin an artist residency, and I was crashing. It's serendipitous that they were going to be in town at the same time I was. I'd learned this a few weeks before as they were leaving New York. I had told everyone I knew why I was going because they found it refreshing to hear I was doing something wholesome in days like these. Nora and I got dinner that night and I took a photo of the black letter D on the machinic door of the restaurant. I liked Detroit. The sprawl of it was like LA where I'm from, but we never had industry like that out there. The industrial relics in Detroit could be traded for people in LA. While I was there, Nora and I each got an email from Paul saying that this would be the final printed web and asking if we'd like to participate. On the second night, I drove to Troy to a hotel where my family was staying. I met them at the hotel restaurant, which was reserved, or just empty, and they greeted me. My cousin Andrew Media was hosting the 10th annual Coleman Family Reunion. Coleman was never my name, or the name of anyone else at the reunion, in case you're wondering. Most of my family members that were present were women, which made me feel comfortable. David and Donna were there from California, and their grandkids, Rashida's kids, were there too. Mimi and her son Blake came from Indiana. I met Andrew Media's daughter Sharon and her kids for the first time, and Everell for the first time too. My aunts Herminia and Gail came in a pair. They're real sweet. Herminia is the blonde one, not naturally. She knows how to text and will ask for a verbal red receipt. Gail uses a walker now. She was a teacher for a long time. I'm reminded by the patience she has when she talks to me. I should ask them about their experience migrating from Tennessee to California and what my dad was like before I was around, but I never do. Andromedia is calm and collected. She can tell me any part of our story that I want to know and is pretty good with email. These three are the record keepers. Andromedia and my aunts are real big into the online heritage thing, and they've been building our family tree for a while. It's wild because half of the people in that room were unknown to the rest of my family a few years back. About four years ago, there was a close match to my dad and the ancestry family tree that his sisters suspected was accurate, so they made him send in his DNA. Before he got the results back, he saw a picture of David's face and knew it was his brother. Donna had also been in touch with my aunts because David, her husband, never knew who his father was and how he could know. It's funny because when I was a kid, my dad said I probably had cousins in the Philippines because my grandpa was in the army there and he was a dog. But my dad never knew he had a brother just across town in Altadena. My dad passed away last year and it was my first time at a family reunion in six years, so my family thought of me as him. My Uncle David looked just like him though, which is wild. His short gray beard and low voice made it uncanny. Everill's great-grandmother was married to a Coleman, and my aunts found her through Ancestry too. We went to the Motown Museum the next day, but we couldn't get tickets. There were so many black families there besides us. I overheard someone say that it's family, re family reunion season in Detroit, which I didn't realize was the thing. I got a pic of myself in front of the historical site marker and figured then that family reunions are an industry just like everything else. Other people have them, but black people own family reunions. Can you own restoration? After emancipation, many black people went north, some never to be heard from again. Donna said for a second time that someone in her family came up to Detroit a century ago, but her family never heard back. It sounded so normal, I didn't hear it the first time she said it. I caught a glimpse of the larger project against us. Maybe I can find a record of him while I'm up here, she said. We went to Second Baptist Church, the oldest black church in the Midwest. 
It's a historical site, but Andrew Media attends service there. We met a black woman with silver hair and a blue tour outfit who told us about the Underground Railroad. The history was elaborate and she explained it in detail. She told us how the first church got burned down to the ground. She told us how the street got its name and how the capital of Liberia was named after Pastor Monroe. The Underground Railroad was neither underground nor a railroad. It was an operation to undermine the state. The boldness of white abolitionists makes me wonder what happened to the integrity of white people in days like these. In the basement of the church is Krogan Station. We could only go in a few people at a time, so we walked through a little museum on the first floor of the church while we waited. They had portraits of every pastor they had, including the one leaving now after 30 years. One of the men pictured had a last name similar to my old one, just one letter different so I figured we were related. There were hand letter descriptions across every wall leading down to the station. A network of slaves escaping from the south to the north read the stairwell. A network? I got into the station and there were paintings there too. A map and a list of stations from Michigan City to Detroit. My cousin Sharon meticulously documented the presence of my family, which filled half of the small room. The way she photographed us like sections of a panorama felt autonomous to me. The photos she took were instantly online. That night we had dinner at the hotel. It was the culmination of the weekend, so some of my family dressed up a little bit. Some still wore the bright red tees of the reunion. I wore the same black hoodie for the morning because I wasn't staying at the hotel, and the red shirt I got was far too small. As I pulled apart some bread to butter it, I heard Andrew Media at the other end of the table describing how I got my family name. In 1843, a man gave my great-great-great-grandmother Elvira to his daughter. What's his name? Johnson? Johnston? She said. He gave her to his daughter, and when his daughter got married, that's how she got the name. It was all very casual. Andrew Media said she had the deed to prove it. I came back to ancestry in my mind. I struggled with my family's commitment to it, yet I was eager to submit myself to a grand narrative, to the artificial restoration of black genealogy, to the analog labor of my aunties. I gave over my DNA a couple years before my dad died. I wanted to join the mesh. Now I'm really in it. The way ancestry works, you're in it long before that. But if you want to see anything, you have to pay. It's clear to me how this will be abused. There's no separation between private business and the state. The knowledge of one is of the other. We gave ourselves over for benign reasons, like family or restoration or an online discount. I'm reminded of the time I gave fake websites my Facebook data to tell me a fun fact about my personality. Now that they know exactly who you are, they can target your ads better. They can turn you away at the border from where you're really from without having to rely on your appearance. It already happened to one guy. Information is the easiest resource to lose. I'm reminded of primitive accumulation and housing laws post-emancipation. Imagine the same thing, but with data. When I returned home to New York, I was greeted by my inbox. Dear AA, here's an invite to my tree. The family tree Andromedia built on Ancestry is wide and sprawling, because the earliest people on it have 10 kids at a time. The spread of the silhouette reminded me of diagrams I've seen of the whole. Frank Wilderson said one condition of social death, blackness, is natal alienation. It's impossible to know exactly where it came from until now. We gave ourselves over to an equation to piece us back together, as if we have anything to give it that it doesn't already own. A network of slaves escaping, compulsory unknowing. I feel that I'm less critical than I should be because I want to know where I came from, and I want other people to know too. What is our business putting us back together like that? A network? I can't help but see the link between the app economy and settler colonialism. 
As I scrolled across the hold, I saw thumbnails of my ancestors. I clicked my great-great-grandfather Henry's portrait, and it expanded. You would have never thought this possible. That's the first time I ever saw him. Thank you. So long in times of fantastic glory. Oh! 
trying to reach. Can you ask what their name is?
adesso che sta se ne sia lo santificato il certo nome vengo a Torino a certo momento la tira come il cielo dono suono il suo pane e cada dia e perdona le nostre offense come anche noi perdoniamo a tutti che ci offendono non nos dejes caer non nos dejes Thank you, everyone. Thank you for coming to the Talk Space. See you all night. Enjoy the rest of the performances. Two, 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 two,
As weeds rise through the cracks of Fifth Avenue, the ugliness of New York City is finally a reflection of the politics it once maintained. The rest of the wild ass crew, Caitlin Cherry, Sandra Perry, and Nora Khan, are out hunting under Caitlin's lead. They are natural. They were naturals far before the world actually ended. They began with the assassination of white institutional board members. Their public character, not their lives. But now, <laughs> but now it's game, sports, squirrels, pigeons, rats, animals you see an abundance of in New York. We eat these or sauteed oyster mushrooms every night. Before they return, I'm afraid you'll have to go. You're not entitled to be present here. And explaining why you feel you are might not end well for you. But before you leave our house, I want to do one more thing. I want to read some parting words. It's something we like to repeat to ourselves out here in the wild ass beyond. Something Nora wrote early on before it all went down. If you have a copy of the scene from inside the house, you can read along with me, it's in the front cover. I think it's also on the programs you got at the door. In the event of disaster, we, the people who have always been surviving, will simply continue to survive. We have learned skills you wouldn't believe, enduring under police states. We refine trauma into gold and use exile as jet propellant. In the event of, sorry, yet we lack a vision of our lives past survival. What will we do when we head back to the land that was never ours? We do not see ourselves in the paranoid manuals of preppers, in minimalist lifestyle retreats, in the nativist isolationism of militiamen. We do not want to repeat these dreams of being the center, forever tyrants over little kingdoms. In this beyond, we will contaminate one another. We first learn from the past, building lookouts to keep our homes from burning. We then seek an unruly communion. New languages, icons, guides, rituals, spun in fire beneath a twilight canopy of fungi. We claim a gorgeous Baroque maximalism, a future that sounds, looks, and feels like our innermost thoughts. Thank you. Woo!